So the topic uh, is uh, indeed uh, related with what I am doing, but uh, I also hope that uh, it can uh, actually be uh, a provocative topic that uh, many people that work in mathematics and they're quite good in what they're working, but they never thought that uh, maybe there is some application or what are the possible pathways to, to apply whatever uh, I'm doing in a nice and interesting uh, field of my area of mathematics. Um, so uh, several, uh, several years, uh, so this is the plan of the, uh, of the lecture. The first part actually uh, uh, will um, uh, be related uh, with uh, one article uh, that I read uh, one and a half years ago in a popular mechanics, but it was about the list of 10 most popular mathematical problems that remain unsolved. And since when I was reading that, uh, I, uh, I actually work in uh, uh, cryptography and I, I noticed that actually the first seven topics are somehow related with uh, one very applied mathematical field, which is the uh, cryptography. And the second part will uh, uh, then uh, mention one thing that maybe it will be uh, for the audience, maybe a little bit far away, I don't know, but uh, uh, it is about one ongoing standardization process of the National Institute of Standards and Technology from the United States about one specific uh, so-called stateful hash-based signature schemes. And then to connect the part one and part two, I will again mention one hard uh, problem, which is completing the problem of completing partial Latin squares or partial Latin rectangles and how it can be actually connected um, with uh, some of uh, the first and the, uh, uh, second part of the talk, and that's the plan for the for the lecture. So um, uh, the list of uh, unsolved mathem uh, uh, mathematical problems is really big, and uh, uh, today I will mention just uh, ten of them. But actually, if uh, you happen to visit uh, uh, Wikipedia, uh, you will uh, find maybe lists of hundreds of uh, 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 unsolved uh, interesting problems. And uh, well, visiting from time to time this list can be personally entertaining, but also it can happen that you, you pick up some idea or uh, even interest, and at the end, it, it can turn out to be uh, useful. And uh, these uh, um, problems uh, vary from different areas of mathematics, algebra, analysis, combinatorics, uh, and many, many other uh, sub areas and sub disciplines of, of, of mathematics. Uh, so, as I mentioned, this. Uh, list is uh, arbitrary or uh, uh, you can compose probably your own list. And as this actually uh, in the beginning, uh, if you visit uh, uh, Wikipedia and this uh, list of unsolved problems, actually uh, it, it says right from the beginning, uh, this is a dynamic list and uh, may never be able to satisfy particular standards for completeness, but Maybe you can even add some of your uh, solve uh, that uh, some other problems that is not mentioned in uh, on this list. So again, this list uh, from the um, this article from Popular Mechanics uh, actually, uh, of course, uh, might not be uh, according to your uh, specific uh, mathematical discipline that you are working, or maybe uh, according to your taste. But still, it's. Um, uh, it, it was provocative for, for me when I read this uh, article. And uh, as I mentioned, the, the at least the first three prob uh, seven problems, uh, there is a connection with uh, 
with uh, uh, cryptography and as I will uh, briefly mention that connection. Uh, for example, the first one, the Collett's conjecture. Uh, well, maybe you, you played a little bit even in high school. I remember when uh, I was in, in high school on the, on the whiteboard uh, or blackboard, we would uh, uh, discuss and someone, some of our uh, uh, classmates uh, brought up uh, this one. So imagine that uh, you start with whatever number and then if the number is uh, even, you divide it by two. But if the result is uh, odd, you multiply the result uh, by three, add one, and continue that process. Uh, and eventually, every sequence will end up uh, with the number one. So it, it kind of captures the, the uh, is it, uh, wow, is it unexpected? Look, I am dividing by two, but I am multiplying by three. I am increasing even uh, faster than I'm decreasing. Uh, but eventually you, you end up with, with number one. Uh, so, and there is a long list of nice works that actually are, are uh, advancing the, 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 the discipline and uh, the knowledge about this problem. And, but how, how can we, um, since I'm working for a long time in uh, uh, cryptography designing uh, hash functions or stream ciphers or, or something in, uh, in cryptography and in coding theory, we, we have so-called um, uh, feedback or linear feedback shift uh, uh, reg registers. So uh, if you have uh, uh, a number N, uh, you can represent it binary with zeros and ones. But then when you do this operation dividing by two, actually you are just shifting it. And since it was uh, even number, it ends with zero uh, at the uh, uh, least significant bit. So you just shift it to the right for one position at or uh, uh, inject one zero from the left. And that's the result of this operation. Well, what about the other operation? Multiplying three plus one. Again, you can, if you represent it, your number n as, uh, uh, as a binary register. Well, first, you just look that, yeah, actually this three n plus one, you can represent it as n plus two n plus one. So n is your original register, then you shift it, but actually now you're shifting and moving it uh, from the opposite direction that, than this di division by two. Now multiplying by two is just shifting everything to the left and injecting zero. And then one is just uh, a register with all zeros except the uh, least significant bit. And if you add, but now the adding is with the, this, as we know, this simple with the carry, uh, with the carry uh, sign. Basically, this composition and these operations are very well also known in, in cryptography. Those are so called arcs design. So, um, the current hash uh, uh, standard used in so many uh, operations, uh, or so many protocols and other uh, um, um, more complex primitives, uh, the hash function SHA-256 and the previous standard SHA-1 and many others uh, uh, pr primitives actually are using this. So, uh, Basically, the advancement in analysis, so there is a, a, a analysis of these designs. The advancements in analysis of arc designs actually can put a light in the solution of color, uh, call it uh, uh, conjecture and vice versa. And there are some, um, uh, some um, works which actually make that uh, uh, connection. The next three, open problems 
uh, are related with cryptography, but uh, from the um, uh, number theory perspective, and probably you have heard about RSA, uh, a public key algorithm that uh, uh, is constructed uh, with prime numbers. And uh, next three uh, famous mathematical problems, the Goldbach conjecture, the twin prime conjecture, and the famous Riemann hypothesis, actually are in connection with prime numbers. There are many others problems, but at least this, they were not mentioned in that uh, popular mechanics uh, uh, article, but at least these three are in connection with prime numbers. So Goldbach, con uh, Goldbach conjecture. Uh, in 1742, Goldbach conjectures that every odd number greater than nine uh, is expressible as a sum of three prime numbers and every even number greater than four is expressible as a sum of two odd uh, primes. Uh, uh, the first one is the uh, odd Goldbach conjecture and the second, uh, the, the, um, uh, the even uh, Goldbach conjecture. Uh, Vinogradov, a uh, long time ago, uh, in 1937, proved three prime theorem which basically is the proof of the odd Goldbach conjecture with some refinement, but basically it's the, it's, it's the, uh, the proof of the three prime uh, uh, of the odd Goldbach conjecture. But the even Goldbach conjecture still uh, um, uh, remains uh, an open problem. Uh, for example, 18, you can represent as five plus 13, 42 many, many others. Actually, up to two to the uh, 10 to the 15, I think, uh, by, by modern computers, it uh, was checked and it, it holds, but there is, uh, uh, there are advancements. And uh, so uh, I will uh, speak of why those ad advancements uh, uh, at the end of these three, uh, uh, mentioning of these three problems. The other uh, is the twin prime uh, conjecture. The twin primes are defined as the primes which differ only by two, P and P plus two, and both are uh, primes. Examples three, five, seven, 19, and many others. So if uh, we have this uh, notation of uh, pi two of X uh, uh, would be uh, the uh, number of prime standards that are um, uh, uh, less than uh, x, and uh, also uh, p, uh, for which uh, uh, also p plus two is the prime. Then basically uh, the, this um, twin prime conjecture uh, says that uh, there are infinitely many twin primes, meaning that uh, uh, the limit of uh, Pi two when x uh, goes to infinity is also infinity, and there is uh, even a strong form of the twin prime conjecture that if if we take the the, the short uh, short notification of this uh, uh, product uh, and uh, the finite integral, then basically it says that uh, uh, this approach is uh, how how this actually the number of uh, pi two. Uh, and uh, this product actually, uh, they, they approach uh, the same value. And the famous uh, Riemann hypothesis, if S is a complex variable, let's say uh, if you write it as sigma plus IT, uh, um, uh, and then uh, if uh, we, uh, construct the Riemann so-called zeta uh, function uh, that depends of S in this form, in this uh, in uh, final sum. Uh, and after uh, actually uh, uh, Riemann calculated uh, the uh, several um, uh, few zeros of this uh, uh, zeta function, uh, he noticed that all of them are lying into uh, the critical line, which is one half. Uh, so the conjecture is, is actually that um, uh, all of them 
uh, lie in the uh, on that uh, uh, real line with the uh, value um, uh, one half, uh, or with uh, with the notations that uh, are introduced here, you can say that the Riemann hypothesis is true. Then uh, this uh, uh, expression holds. Now, uh, what would be the uh, why these um, uh, three and similar open problems uh, uh, in mathematics would be useful in, in cryptography? Actually, uh, uh, primality testing and integer factorization. If this, uh, these advances actually are uh, um, 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 putting a more knowledge or light into the distribution of prime numbers and the relations between prime numbers and basically those uh, uh, that extra knowledge can help in advancement of the algorithms that uh, are performing integer factorization or some other uh, type of uh, analysis. Also, uh, uh, there have been uh, based on, uh, at least for the Goldbach conjecture, uh, uh, recently um, uh, a proposal for a constructive, not just integer factorization in order to break the, uh, the, 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 uh, some of the cryptographic schemes, but to construct the uh, cryptographic schemes based on the Goldbach conjecture. And there was, a, this is a, some proposal for authenticated cipher based on the Goldbach conjecture, this, this reference here. Now, uh, uh, in connection, uh, this, uh, um, uh, Birk and Swingerton uh, Dyer conjecture. Uh, this um, uh, is from a recent days, uh, but uh, this is one of the uh, six unsolved uh, millennium uh, price problems and is in connection with modern or modern produce um, problems uh, coming from the um, uh, elliptical curves. Um, uh, and um, uh, basically, when uh, the, uh, the era of uh, uh, computers uh, uh, back in 1960s uh, started to be uh, uh, applied more and more, uh, and mathematicians started to apply it more uh, and more, um, uh, they started to, to count the number of certain uh, uh, basically, the the number of points on on uh, elliptical curves, and um, uh, this conjecture basically is uh, that uh, 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 this uh, uh, number of uh, 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 points uh, uh, or uh, modulo p, uh, modulo uh, prime number, but on elliptical curve. Uh, uh, is if it is empty, then that uh, this ratio or the product of uh, this ratio um, uh, con uh, uh, converges to, to uh, this expression here. And why this would be uh, important? Well, um, in the beginning of the uh, uh, elliptical uh, curve cryptography, but there was an open problem about uh, how many uh, how many uh, points uh, are on elliptical curve specifically uh, chosen for the cryptographic purposes. Uh, how many elements the um, the elliptic uh, uh, group uh, has. Uh, uh, later, that problem was solved, but for specific values of p and for specific values of those uh, elliptical uh, 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 curves. So for general, this would be really a big advancement if, if, uh, if um, uh, a good, uh, or if this problem is uh, uh, solved or new knowledge is gained uh, for sol from solving this problem. Then um, next op uh, problem, the kissing number problem, uh, is uh, coming from geometry, but also is very closely related with the coding theory and 
uh, it's um, uh, uh, given a sphere uh, packing uh, uh, basically what is the number of touching points in the optimal uh, number of touching points if, if you optimally distribute uh, the spheres in, in different dimensions. And the, the, the answer is known for a very limited number of um, dimensions, dimension two, uh, in two dimensions, uh, in, in one dimension it's two, in two dimensions it's six, and uh, um, for all dimensions except for dimension A, eight and 24, uh, that number is unknown. Uh, so the advancements in kissing number problems will have influence in code-based cryptography, uh, in lattice-based cryptography. And these two types of cryptographies actually are nowadays a very serious candidates to offer algorithms that uh, will be so-called post-quantum uh, uh, cryptographic algorithms meaning when, when the advancement uh, of the uh, quantum computers uh, is realistic, uh, the current uh, elliptical curves or uh, RSA-based uh, cryptography will be broken, but these types of post-quantum cryptography uh, algorithms will be uh, still resistant and safe. So another problem that also has um, uh, interesting connection with the uh, um, with uh, cryptography is the unknotting problem. And the unknotting problem is the problem of algorithmically recognizing the unknot, uh, uh, giving some representation of the knot as a, di a diagram. And this is coming from topology, but uh, uh, in connection with that, there have been uh, uh, bright groups and um, uh, even the quantum topology and quantum computing. And I just mentioned, and there is a nice advancement in that direction, but I just mentioned that actually a quant advancements in the quantum computing thing is very much influencing now the advancement, advancements in cryptography with these uh, um, constructions of uh, post-quantum cryptographic algorithm. So it's, really nicely connected. Well, next three problems are there in that list. So I couldn't find direct uh, direct connection uh, with, uh, with cryptography, but um, yes, and anyway, I will, this bit, because maybe someone from the audience is working in uh, that uh, discipline, large cardinal uh, project. Um, so uh, the, a large cra uh, cardinal property is a certain kind of property of so-called tr transfinite cardinal numbers, um, and which are the, um, uh, the numbers uh, sort of like uh, um, axiomatic uh, setups, uh, um, or axiomatization of the set uh, theory, Zermelo, Frankel uh, choice. Uh, uh, and these, um, probably these notions of uh, infinities like Aleph zero, the, the, the simplest uh, uh, infinity and more and more and more complex uh, notions of uh, infinity. I don't know, is there any direct uh, connection with uh, cryptography, but at least, this is uh, uh, interesting and uh, open problem. Another question or another problem is, um, is P plus E algebraic or transcendental? Direct connection, I don't know, but uh, it, it is interesting problem. Or U, uh, Euler or Euler uh, Mascheroni constant, um, uh, is it rational or not? Uh, so, so uh, um, if you sum up all natural numbers, the, the inverse of all natural numbers and divide uh, um, minus uh, 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 a logarithm, natural logarithm of n, when this n goes to infinity, 
is it rational or not? Uh, well, no one knows. Okay, so this is a, a summary of this, uh, at least the first seven uh, and how they are connected and the other uh, three uh, are, maybe they are pure theoretical interests, but you never know uh, how you can make a, a connection with uh, some applied field like cryptography. Now, I, I will briefly uh, mention now something which is uh, pretty uh, much uh, really uh, specific for cryptography. And this is this NIST proposal for stateful uh, hash-based signatures. So if you are lost in a lot of technical things, I will try not to go too uh, deep into details, but just to give you a, um, a flavor. Okay, how it is contracted? What are the intuition or intuitive ideas behind this? And then make the uh, third part for with connecting uh, all uh, all uh, three uh, parts together. So uh, what uh, what is uh, this uh, 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 state so-called stateful hash based signature? So the idea comes from uh, one-time signature systems. And what would that be? Uh, the very uh, one ingredient that uh, actually maybe you will find out uh, easy to understand or intuitively understand is the notion of one way function. Uh, so you can think uh, of, okay, you have, uh, it's easy to, to compute or to do computations in one direction, but once you have the output, if you are asked to return uh, uh, back, it is infeasible or almost impossible. Uh, so that would be the, uh, the, the the intuitive notion. Now, from this intuitive, and there are constructions which actually are achieving that. No one has proved that one-way functions mathematically exist. No one. So that is also one one uh, uh, problem, open problem. No one has proved. But uh, there are a lot of constructions that seems like one way without proof. Now, if you have such a construction, uh, then uh, the idea is produce some randomness. Yeah, this, uh, the general design strategy is produce a random data and then consider that produce random data as something that you will keep a secret because you produced it in a random way. But if you transform it with this one way function, whatever is produced here, basically you are allowed to give it as a public information. Why? Because you're relying on the hardness of this one way function. Uh, if you give these green parts, no one can go back and find these yellowish uh, parts. And, but that is, that is uh, okay, one part. And then uh, if you want to produce a signature, then you have to make a connection between your, a message and a public key and a secret key. And how this is done with this, a long time ago from 79. Well, your message may be composed of zeros and ones. Since you produced a lot of randomness here, so for every bit for the first position, this B1, your bit can be zero or one. For the second one, zero or one, etc. So your randomness can be here, that is your secret for the first bit. Maybe it was one, maybe it was, uh, maybe it was zero, maybe it was one, etc. But now you would take this, uh, so you will uh, just, because everyone has this, green part, which is the public key. Uh, you will reveal 
just one part of you, either this part or this part. Uh, so by revealing only one of these secret parts, basically, and you are giving the recipe how you uh, uh, re reveal it because it was either zero or, or one, the verifier can take this revealed part here, make once more the hash function and check is this revealed part actually giving you either this one or this one? If it is true, so the verifier will be convinced, wow, this is really in connection, this message with this public key really is in connection with the one that possess this secret part. So that is the, in general idea. I will not really go deeper because then suddenly it's become uh, deeper, uh, uh, tiny little de details that can, can really uh, 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 make a big hurdle. But uh, then, that, but uh, you, can, you can use this scheme only for one signature. In reality, you would like to, to make many signatures. So how you would do that? Well, the, the, the signature scheme, one-time signature that I described here, imagine this public part, the big one that you will hash it and the, it is represented only by one uh, leaf here. If you hash it, you have some result which is represented here. Then produce another one and that is represented here. Then produce another one and another one and another one. And then you say, okay, all these are one-time hashes, but if, uh, because if you compose them in a nice way, then actually uh, you can publish only the root. So the, the, the root is small, you can publish only the root. And whenever you are trying to, to make uh, uh, a signature, you will give the path to this root. And because of the one-wayness, all the construction is many signature schemes suddenly because of this nice construction. And then there were several uh, updates. I will not go uh, really into detail because, but one nice uh, update or improvement of this was the Winternitz uh, one-time signature. These details we will uh, skip. These are also the details that actually that uh, a nice signature can be nicely and mathematically proof under certain assumptions that actually is really secure. Um, uh, uh, this is the abbreviation of existential unforgeability with the chosen message, uh, message attacks. So, so this one is mathematical area, very serious cryptographic and mathematical uh, 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 modeling was proven that this is this is solid this is this is nice and secure and then if you recall this idea of combining some smaller structures into a bigger one into the uh, 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 tree structure it was even further you can build even bigger trees of all those uh, other schemes into a even bigger uh, uh, schemes and this these uh, actually compositions are the subject of this latest standardization that NIST is pushing. And there have been several uh, similar flavors of, of this. And as you notice here, these combinations of, of uh, the uh, one-time signatures into a bigger structures uh, recently, there was an idea, okay, but why, there is a, a strong argument why the schemes that I, in the beginning I uh, mentioned, why it's only one time signature. Uh, because if you use it once more, basically you will reveal a lot of, uh, uh, previously you, you revealed uh, some of the secret key and then you're basically you're leaking uh, your, uh, too much of your secret key. So that's why it's one time. But uh, in order to make um, 
uh, these schemes more efficient in size. People came with a few time signature scheme and why this few? Because you can use it for several times in, uh, uh, until uh, it's uh, uh, too much use and then you have to uh, go for, for a next one. Now, uh, how can we actually, uh, can, can we uh, go through this, uh, through this uh, recipe here? From a random data construct structures that keep that randomness as a secret key and transform that data with the help of the pri uh, primitive that gives hard instances. And from the information of the message uh, to be sent, reveal the parcel info. If you have this recipe, maybe also in your mathematical area where you know, oh, this is a hard problem, but this problem can do something else. Uh, I mean, it's not about one way function. It's not about, uh, but maybe it's in, in, in your uh, mathematical area, but there are some problems which are hard to solve and you can actually construct uh, uh, with just generating ran a random data, you can construct objects which uh, you can transform through that hard problem that you are working on in mathematics. And this is that connection. So in the uh, combinatorics, uh, there is uh, uh, one hard problem. Uh, basically, it was shown that this is actually an NP-complete problem. So if you have a partial Latin square, Latin square, uh, probably you know, are the um, squares where all the columns and all the all, all the rows and all uh, all co columns uh, consist of n elements, different n elements permutations. Um, but if you have a partial, uh, meaning uh, that uh, you construct one and then remove. Uh, uh, elements and basically uh, uh, then the, the, the square is sort of like with empty cells. Completing that uh, uh, that uh, partial Latin square or Latin rectangle is empty complete problem. And there is a nice um, uh, proof of that uh, fact. Uh, now, again, this was the recipe previously, but for another structure, but can we apply the same uh, recipe here? Uh, uh, and now um, I, uh, so probably uh, once I produce, probably I will, I will give uh, uh, the, uh, these slides as a PDF. You can try by yourself having only this, um, this um, sort of, uh, partial uh, Latin uh, square. Although this one is not even a, a Latin rectangle because basically these have been, these have been uh, uh, kind of reshuffled and you can see here zero and zero is uh, two times, but you should find out the proper position of zero here and zero here in order not to repeat. And everything is coming from really a partial Latin rectangle. Now, uh, having uh, that partial information, which can be given as a public key, uh, how can you produce uh, a signatures? Now I will give this uh, in general, um, so we need for, for all the ingredients from the public key cryptography, uh, we need uh, a secret key, production of secret key, uh, uh, productions of signatures and verifications of signatures. So basically in a most strict uh, cryptographic uh, uh, recipe, uh, this would be that you need a key generation procedure you need a signature procedure and you need a verification procedure. And key generation procedure would be produce a Latin square of size N, cut that Latin square in two parts and one rows and the rest. 
remove from each row and each column exactly k elements. Uh, you publish the first part as your public key and but you sort in uh, ascending order and that is your public key. Uh, and the knowledge of the whole Latin square and, uh, and everything or uh, even just the first uh, and uh, one uh, rows is your secret key. And how you will sign, if you have a message, you will have to hash it to make a shorter one. But out of that random, uh, randomly looking uh, hash value, there is uh, an old uh, algorithm uh, here, um, uh, traversal uh, uh, finding uh, uh, algorithm uh, map uh, that uh, random um, uh, hash value to a permutation consisting of n elements in such a way that uh, every element does not consist of any of the public key uh, elements in the columns. It's this one is kind of like that hill. Uh, um, a routine is known from 60s or 70s within this uh, uh, Latin squares um, area of mathematics. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, call the, the same procedure, but with the rest of the information and complete a co to the complete uh, Latin square. If, since you know the secret key, and the previous one, basically, it's possible for you to, to uh, uh, complete the Latin square. While for the all rest of the public that have only this partial information, the problem is almost like empty complete uh, problem. And that's the generation. So, and then you publish this part and this part would be the signature. And the verification would be make the, again, the message hash check, uh, does the mapping produces really this first row and then check if in every uh, column and in every row there are missing K elements. And why this would be the few times signature? Because actually you can produce few times with few messages this row here and still uh, not reveal too much of, of, for these missing elements, because basically these missing elements, once you reveal one signature, basically you are giving, you are giving not just your public key, which is partial Latin uh, uh, rectangle, but you, the rest is partial or complete thing is the partial Latin square. Uh, uh, and But completing that partial Latin square is hard. If you use it, uh, one more time, you will reveal some of these missing elements, but not all of them. Still, you have partial Latin uh, square, and that's still a hard problem, but you should not use it too much time. So this was, uh, yeah, why it is few times, because you can use it a few times. So this is the connection between uh, one of the uh, um, uh, hard problems uh, in, uh, in uh, combinatorics with uh, the things that I was uh, working in the past two years. So with this, I would like to thank you for your attention.